Well, oh, my. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will be. It's not Thursday night, but it's Saturday boot camp. So Reverend Turner will not be here today for this, but he will be here for prayer later. Oh, good. good. Yeah, I know. Very yeah. good. So we yeah. are going to get started with our boot camp. Boot camp. Boot camp. And we'll start out. Um, any prayer requests? Oh, can I ask you to pray for you? you, you she's been walking back and forth to the hospital. Who? Mom, that's who. She wants to ask you for a prayer request. Mm, okay, of yeah. course. For her? Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. And, and also for Wally, she's going to do some kidney stuff. You pray for Wally too? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering how she was yeah. doing. She's going to do some kidney stone. Oh, she has kidney stones? That's miserable. No, no, her kidneys. Kidney stones. No, not kidney stones. Kidneys, George. Stones. Oh, she's going to oh, pray for Wally. Okay, we'll just pray for her. All right. And huh? then Alicia Bonner's sister-in-law, Alita, she's not doing very well. Are you talking about Alita Bonner? No, her name is Aletha. That's what I just uh, said, Aletha. Aletha. Aletha, yes, that is her name. And she had a massive heart attack and not doing well, so. Bonner. Oh, um, okay. And then Vince Harper, the Floyd family at the passing of Vincent, Brother Dean Backman, Sister Harriet, um, her brother passed away, her brother Johnny. Oh, oh, sorry, Maria. What's that? Sorry. Oh, it's okay. And then Brother Frederick Brady, who's battling cancer, and then Sister Teresa Newsom and Larry Newsom. And Sister mm -hmm. Teresa is uh, Pastor Turner's sister. Oh. And Larry is his nephew. So, huh. and of course, pray for Pastor and for Jim because they've been putting that thing together for two days now. <laughs> and I feel bad for him. It's a huge tent, it's a lot of work. So, wow. we'll see what happens. I know. So, I got the easy job. I got to teach class. I don't have to put the tent together. <laughs> So there you go. All right. Any other prayer? You know, we're going to pray for Faith and Angie because they weren't here on Thursday night either. So uh -oh. um, I'm sure they'll be back next week. Yes. Yeah, next probably week. enjoying the first few days of summer vacation after her graduation. Um, so hopefully they'll be back on Thursday. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to get started with scripture and prayer. I can read Psalm 135, and then who wants to pray us in? Me. Tania. Okay, so George, at the end, you can pray us out. How's that? Yeah. Does that sound good? All right. I bet you this is Pastor knocking on my door. Come in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. It's the tent maker. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Some yeah, I'm sure I have a ton of them, but okay. Yeah, if it'll help. All right. How y'all doing? Doing good, right? Yeah, okay. Staying cool. You're not in the yeah. air. Staying cool. Oh. There you go. I told him you were, I got the easy job. I got to teach class and you and Jim have to put that big old tent together. Yeah, we're trying <laughs> to put it together. All right. You guys enjoy. Okay. Get you. All right. Good seeing you. Good to see you. Well, there you go. You got to see him after all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> I'm going to read Psalm 135. Kind of a long one, but it's really good. It's all about praising the Lord, which we love to do. So, 
it says, praise the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, praise him, you servants of the Lord, you who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name, for that is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob to be his own, Israel to be his treasured possession. I know that the Lord is great, that our Lord is greater than all gods. The Lord does whatever pleases him in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and all their depths. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of men and animals. He sent his signs and wonders into your midst, O Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. He struck down many nations and killed mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. And he gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his people, Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nation are silver and gold made by the hands of men. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but they cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. O house of Israel, praise the Lord. O house of Aaron, praise the Lord. O house of Levi, praise the Lord. You who fear him, praise the Lord. Praise be to the Lord from Zion, to him who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Lord. Woo! A lot of Woo. praise in the Lord. <laughs> I love that song. All right, Tanaya, you go right ahead and lead us in prayer. Okay. Please, God, please vote, pray for Wally and Lanita and help them get better. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Mm. Thanks. All right. Here we go. Pathways. Hopefully it comes up okay. There we go. Can you see it? Um, yeah. Okay, good. All right, so we have that might cut that off a little bit. I might have to make it a little smaller, but we should be okay. All right, so we're in the section about the desire to please God. So last week we talked about when one is saved, there's a desire to please the Heavenly Father. See, this is kind of cutting off, so let me bring it down a little bit. There we go. Um, that's as real as the desire of a child to please his father or mother. So especially once we become saved, we have that desire, that want to, to please God. And when we know we have not pleased God, he convicts us because, you know, we know that and we, we don't feel good about it. Right. Right. So we, when we, when we, do something that we know God isn't pleased with, then we have that feeling of remorse. And it's almost like when your parent is, have you ever had your parents say, I'm very disappointed in you? And oh my goodness, we don't ever want to hear that, right? Uh -oh. No, no. no. But sometimes we hear it and it reminds us that, you know, we need to be more obedient. And so that same thing happens when we disobey God that disobeys our parents. And in his own way, He's telling us, you know, hey, you better, you better wise up and, <laughs> you know, I'm not happy right. about your behavior. So it's kind of like when our parents say, I'm very disappointed in you. So, so we're going to go on. I think we're starting. We got through, um, we may not always do what God commands, but the desire of the heart of one who is saved is to do them. So then you have those people that just don't care, the ones that are, aren't saved and they don't realize, um, you know, that what they're doing is, is angering and hurting God and, and not obeying him and that they do things and they just don't care, mainly because they don't know, right? They really right. don't know that it's not only that it's a sin, but, you know, that... Um, 
you know, that they're sinning against God. They don't think about it that way. And so they do things that are very not pleasing to God. And, and that's why we have to keep sharing his word and sharing Jesus with people so that they understand, right? Mm -hmm. That eventually we're going to have to answer for our behavior. You know, whether it's here or when we die, we're going to have to answer for the things that we've said and done. And so we want to make sure that we're doing and saying things that are pleasing to God. But one thing that happens when you're saved is that all of a sudden you just, you know that God's your father, you know the goodness of God, and you just want to please him. Even though sometimes we end up doing stuff that isn't pleasing to God, we, you know, we can repent and we can say, you know, God, forgive me. So that's kind of the difference of you, you have a conscience and you feel bad when you do something against, uh, against God. So it says we're right here in number two, who wants to read the first part of it? I want to read number two. Okay. Yeah. The Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16 had, had this desire to please the Lord and keep his commandments. Okay. So go ahead and read A. Me? Yes. Okay, I'll read A. Oh, Acts. 1633 teaches us that the same night of his conversion, mm -hmm. the jailer was baptized. Good job. Okay, so let's go to Acts chapter 16. I did good, George. You did great. Thanks, Maria. You're welcome. Oh, you want Acts 16? Yes, Acts oh, chapter 16. Okay. So I sure. think in one of our other lessons, because this kind of goes along with the whole thing, we've talked about what happened when Paul and Silas were imprisoned, right? Oh, I and found how... chapter 16 of Acts. Are you in 16? Yes, I am in 16. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to have you read something in a minute. We'll talk a little bit about it first. So this okay. jailer, so Paul and Silas went to prison, of course, for telling people about Jesus, right? And so they were beaten and they were in this prison. And remember uh -huh. when we were talking about how at midnight they started, um, praying and singing praises to God, right? And all the prisoners heard them. And then all of a sudden there's this great big earthquake and the prison walls came down. And this whole time the jailer was asleep, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then he woke up and he got scared and he was about to kill himself because he thought all of the prisoners would leave. All of their chains came up, the, the walls came down and they all could have escaped, right? But yeah. you just know that God, <laughs> that was all God because they didn't go anywhere. And then Paul and Silas actually were able to stop the jailer from hurting himself, right? And they, yeah. he, they said, don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. Don't worry. And in that moment, that jailer knew Oh. And he said, what must I do to be saved? Because, you know, what had happened was was something that um, ended up changing his whole life, the jailer. And so not only did, um, you know, not only did he end up believing, but you can imagine how many of the prisoners probably ended up believing as well. And so instead of imprisoning them, he took them to his house and fed them and cleaned up all their wounds. And that whole family was baptized and saved. Do you remember that whole story? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about, so it says in Acts 16.33 teaches us 
that the same night of his conversion, the jailer was baptized. So do you know what conversion means? Uh, no, I don't know what conversion means. Okay, no. so it's, it's kind of that switching of, so he went from being a non-believer to being a believer. He converted. So you know when we hear that people convert from one thing to another, so they change from one way or one thing to another, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that night for him, the same night of his conversion, they're talking about um, how, you know, that night before he went to sleep, he was not a believer and he wasn't a very nice person, right? Mm -hmm. And, but when he woke up, he had been completely changed, <laughs> right? So that's yeah. when I said he went to sleep one way and woke up another way. Um, is that in that that whole thing that night he converted so that was they were talking about his conversion his his change to something else and so in that night he was baptized so Tania if you want to read uh, 16 verse sure. 33 yeah verse 33 okay yeah you want to read all of this um just just verse 33 Okay. And yeah. actually, you know what? Read through 33 and 34. 33 and 34? Mm-hmm. Oh. What do you mean? Acts right. chapter 16, verses 33 and 34. Okay. Okay. He took them the same hour, the night, and washed a shrine. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. And now when he brought, the, brought them into his house, they sat, set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Wow. So he went from being the jailer and someone that imprisoned and probably beat the prisoners, right? Mm -hmm. And put them in conditions that were not very good. They probably didn't have any food or water or anything, right? And it was mm -hmm. probably pretty dark and cold in there. But after all of this happened and he asked, what must I do to be saved? They told him, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household, right? Mm -hmm. And so it said at the hour of the night that the jailer took them and he washed their wounds and your said stripes. Right. Um, kind of the same thing because in those days when they got hit with, you know, a stick or a, a you know, or kind of whip, that it ended up looking like stripes because the wounds would come across like that. So it sort of looked like they had stripes, but they are wounds. And yeah. he, they baptized him and the whole family, right? Yeah. And so his desire to do good all of the sudden, right? Because he didn't have a desire to do good before he went to sleep that night, did he? No. But then God showed him through Paul and Silas, right? and prove to him that there was good because they could have all gone away the jailer would have killed himself and that wouldn't have been a very good story but <laughs> but instead they were there to show the love of god and they you know that even though that they were in horrible conditions they were praising god through it you know they were singing singing songs to the lord and and praying and praising him and everybody heard and so it caused God to shake those prison walls down and look at, you know, look how many people were saved just in that, just in that night. And so um, mm -hmm. he fed them too, right? He yeah. fed them yeah. if he wanted to know. So what do you think? Now his life completely changed. So from then on, do you think that he 
would be able to ever go back to the way he was before? No. No. How come? Uh, do you know, George? What happens to us when we're saved? We come baptized. We do. We we have our own conversion, don't we? Yes, we do. Never the same. Conversion. Once we let Jesus into our heart, how could yes. we ever be the same again? Hmm. Right? We can't. And plus, no, we, we don't want to be. That jailer probably didn't ever want to go back to the way he was, right? Right. Mm hmm. That is very true. So. Pretty incredible. So go ahead and read B. George, you want to read B? Go ahead, George. Oh, right up here. B, hun. Oh, oh, oh. Evidence. And then, ah, uh, yes, they just to life and to let obedience. Good. To the Lord. And. And to praise Him. Good. Yes. So. That, that this act is evidence of his desire. So which act do you think they're talking about? Hmm? In six to what, what you read? So all the what he did for Paul and Silas? Hmm. Or the fact that he was baptized? In time. He was baptized, and once we're baptized, so, you know, he gave his life over to the Lord that night is what happened, right? And now he has a desire to live in obedience to the Lord and to please him. Was he living a life that was pleasing to the Lord before? Before he got saved, was he pleasing the Lord with his behavior? Uh-uh. Mm -mm. No. He sure wasn't, was he? And most of us aren't. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't really living a life that was pleasing to the Lord before I was saved either. I mean, I wasn't killing people or anything like that, but you know, it, we don't have to be killing people to not be living in obedience and and pleasing the Lord, right? It right. could just be in how we treat people, how we talk to people, even maybe how we treat ourselves that we um, we just don't care about our actions or how they affect other people, right? Yeah. yeah. And so thank God for Jesus, because when we're saved, all of that changes. It changes us. And we start to pray. I never prayed before I got saved. I mean, I knew who God was, but I didn't have a relationship with him. And now I understand why my life was the way it was before I, <laughs> before I was saved. So I'm, I'm just grateful and thankful every day. And God's done so much in my life that I just, I do want to, to please him with everything I do. And, and now, you know, my work and my life is about serving him and serving others. And so he does. He wants us to love each other and help our brothers and sisters. And that was really what this jailer did, didn't he? He did that for Paul and Silas. Once he realized and once his eyes were opened, he started doing really wonderful things for them and was baptized. And in that moment, he was saying, I want to be good and obey God for the rest of my life. And I want my whole family to be that way, right? Right. Because his whole family, his whole household got saved and baptized that night. Yeah. So they all made a commitment in their conversion to obey the Lord. So I bet their life got a whole lot better, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we go on to B. Who wants to read B? 
army be Yeah, army B. Okay. Um, where's B? Right here at the top. Right here? Uh-huh. The proof, the proof of our love is for the Wait, Lord. Where are you? Where are you? Oh no, uh, this B. Oh, I'm sorry. The capital B up here. You're right. You were reading a, a, a different B. I did say B yeah. it wasn't specific. So this one up at the top oh. under the green. Yeah. Okay. When, when one doesn't have the desire to obey and to please the Lord, there is good reason for that person to have doubts about his salvation. Good job. Okay. So let's talk about that for a second. So when what it's saying is when someone doesn't have the desire to obey or to please God, right, the Lord, there's good reason for that person to have doubts about his salvation. So if someone's not a believer, that means they're going to doubt what, what God is all about or doubt what you're trying to tell them God is about, right? Mm-hmm. So when they don't know, when you don't know, then, you know, you, you're, you are going to have doubts. So there's, they're saying there's a good reason for that person to have doubts about his salvation. But once you've been saved, do you ever doubt how good God is? Yeah. You doubt it? You don't no, think I no, no, I don't. No, no, I don't either. And that's no. because we know we've been saved. But before we were saved, you know, sometimes when you talk about, you know, or tell someone, wow, you know, I'll pray for you or I'll, you know, have you thought about, have you heard about Jesus? Have you, you know, and they kind of look at you kind of funny. Do you ever, did you ever see that? Or do you ever come across that? Do you know people that don't believe in God? Uh uh. No. <laughs> what? Well, you've seen people maybe, you know, that that probably don't believe that are not believers or don't go to church or don't, you know. I like church. So uh, me I. too. Me too. I like church. But yeah. I didn't before. So before I was saved and and you know, you might hear this from people from, you know, that before they were saved, they really didn't believe in anything good enough like that. They, they It sounds like it's way too good to be true sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the goodness of God is something that is just more than our little brains can handle. It, it's, so, it's so much more than even we think or know it to be. Um, and we just, we want to share that with everybody, but we have to remember not everybody's ready to hear that. And depending on what they've been through in life, maybe they're so low or they've been through so many bad things, they don't believe in anything good anymore, right? right. So all you have to do really is pray for that person. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, let God do the rest. We can't save anybody, but God can. And all, all he called us to do was just to give the message, you know, tell people about Jesus and he's going to do the rest. We can't save anybody. Mm -hmm. All right. So who wants to read uh, number one under that B that Tania just read? I want to read number one. Okay. Yeah. Um, where's um, number one? Right here, under that paragraph B that you just read, this one right here. Okay, that is not to say that those who are saved always obey and always live to please the Lord, but that there should be an, an eternal 
internal internal desire to do so good job hey. all right thank you yeah. You're so what it's saying is that even when we're saved, mm. that it's still not always easy for us to obey and live to please God. But mm -hmm. like I was saying, when we don't, that internal desire. So what that means internal is something that's inside, right? Yeah. And a desire is to want something. So they're talking about that, that wanting that comes from inside of you, from your heart, your mind, your soul, when you really want to do something, right? right? And so even though on the outside, sometimes we do stuff that isn't obedient or very nice or pleasing to God, we feel it on the inside, don't we? Yeah. And, but on the flip side, when we do something really good and we know God is pleased, we feel that on the inside or the internal also, don't we? We feel really good about it. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that God's happy. And when, when we do something to make God happy, boy, woo, we feel good, don't we? Because he does so much for us to make us happy that when yeah. we finally do something that we know makes him happy, it just makes us even happier. Yeah. So that's always good. So it goes to, and we'll stop after this, but A just says John chapter 14, verse 15. So let's oh, go yeah. to John 14. Okay. And you want me to read what John me? has to tell us? Um, you want me to read John? Of course I do. Okay, I can read John chapter 14. And then all you, the only verse you're going to read is verse 15. Okay. Now I'm in John four, chapter 14. And verse 15. Oh, only right here? I think so. Read it and we'll see if that's it. Okay, no longer I call you servant. Uh, that might not be it. Are you, okay, so make sure that it's, it probably in. starts like, if you love me, it's uh, oh, verse 15, chapter 14, verse 15. Me right here? Maybe, go ahead and read. If you love me, you keep, you keep my if you let me keep my commandments there you go that was it good job so you. if you love me you'll keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments absolutely so that's what he's saying that's and yeah. that's kind of that feeling that and we know we love him right so we're yeah. gonna do everything that we can to yep. try and keep his commandments and continue to make him God happy, right? Happy. And that's how we praise him. That's how we serve him. That's how we show our love for him. Yeah, is love. We keep his commands and we live yeah. a life that's pleasing to him and we obey him, right? And right. we obey his commands. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so B says the proof of our love for the Lord is the way we keep his commandments. So that's what we were just saying. That's how we continue to glorify him and, um, and please him is through keeping his commandments. Who knows yeah. all 10 commandments? You do. Yeah, I know all the 10 commandments. Awesome. Can you say them? Huh? Can you I say them? I think it's an exodus. I think. Oh. See if we can find it. Exodus what? Oh, we need to find exodus. Well, that, that's not. I'm looking for exodus. You 
got the you've got the book right, Tanaya. You are absolutely right about that. So go to Exodus. Oh, the Ten Commandments right here. Which chapter did you find it in? Chapter 20. The Ten Commandments. <laughs> Good job, Tanaya. That's absolutely correct. I can't do all the Ten Commandments. Awesome. You want me to do all of them? Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. Well, go for it then. Why not? We always need a refresher. <laughs> I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no God before me. Mm -hmm. You are not Make your, for yourself a carved image. Yeah. Any likeness or, no, George is an exodus, George. Keep reading. You're good. He'll find it. Okay. Any likeness or anything that is in heaven above, above or any over beneath that is in water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them nor stir, for I, the Lord, you, your God, are you stuck on a word? No, I'm not. You shall not take. The name of your Lord, of uh, your God in vain, and shall for the Lord not hold him guiltless who took his name in vain. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy, and shall, I mean, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the Sabbath, the seventh day, is the Sabbath of the Lord your God shall not do your work or nor your son, I mean, your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, or your female servant, nor your cattle, nor stranger within your gate in six days. See, I'm doing the Ten Commandments, Mom, so let me do it. Mom, I'm reading. Oh. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. The seventh day, therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your mother and father that honor your mother and father your father and your mother that your days will be long upon the land which is the Lord your, your God is giving you you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against um, your neighbor. You one shall more. not con what? I just said one more. You got to keep going. You shall not convict. Your neighbor's house, you shall not convict your neighbor's wife or his, or his male servant or his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that's your neighbor. Good job, Tanaya. That was all 10. Yeah. Very good. So number one. No other God before him. Two, no. 
do not make idols, right? No idol worship. Number three, do not take the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. Number four, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Right. Five, honor your father and your mother. Six, you shall not commit murder. Four, no adultery. Right. No adultery. That's seven. No stealing. Eight. That's eight. Don't give false is. testimony against your neighbor. Nine, and do not covet your neighbor's house. What? Donkey, ox, any of that uh, stuff, right? That's right, yeah. Oh. Very good. Awesome job, Tanaya. Thank you for reading all that. You're welcome. All right, so there we have it. We are stopping at B. So we'll start with C next week. Pastor will be back for that one. Okay. Yeah. And well, went a few minutes it. over, but we started a few minutes late. So we should be just fine. Let me yeah. just highlight where we stopped. All right, you guys did an awesome job. You tell me one thing you learned or remembered from today. About the jailer. What about him? Because he's a prisoner. Mm-hmm, yeah. Paul and Silas were the prisoners and they he got saved from what happened, huh? Yeah. And he had a desire. He had that desire to please God after that. What about you, George? George? And God. Go ahead. <laughs> and God, he does wonderful things, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can change us in, in the blink of an eye, he can change us. So yeah. Um, yeah. And I got to hear the Ten Commandments again. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you for letting me teach today. I had a great time with you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, good. You did an awesome job. All right, we'll see you in, well, well, you'll hear, you'll see us, we'll hear you or see you in prayer tonight, right? Yeah. We'll have our yeah. service tomorrow online. And, and here. Reverend Turner's prayer tonight. Yes, Reverend, Turnal and, Reverend Turner and Reverend Turner, Parker will be here for Turner. prayer. Tonight. You just the Reverend Turnal. I know. I'm sorry. My tongue got twisted. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right, you guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you in a couple hours, right? Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.